Hey guys, if anybody's here yet, nobody's here yet. So for those of you that are going to view this later, I'm going to be going into a book called Stocking Up. And we're going to discuss drying fruits and vegetables and things of that nature. So hopefully we can get somebody in here anyway. Oh, I do have somebody in here. Yay. Howdy. Hi, Ian. Happy, uh, well, it's still Friday here. Um, I don't know where you're from, but with a name like Ian, I'm thinking UK, but I could be wrong. Where are you from? Oh, New Zealand. Okay. Well, I know a little bit of Maori. Kia ora. There we go. I only know how to say hello and goodbye, so that's it. <laughs> New Zealand. Oh, you guys just had a great big problem with like an earthquake, didn't you? Hi, Spangies. Uh, I think you guys had a big problem. Spangies, let's see. We're going to make you a moderator, Spangies. Hopefully I did that right. Anyway, I was going to go over, uh, I, I was going to do this on my last live stream, but I, they got, we got sidetracked talking about first aid. So I'm, what was that? Okay. Um, I'm going into the book stocking up because I wanted to discuss the drying techniques. Aloha. Um, Basically, it, it, there's some things in here that are right and some not so right, okay? You got to remember, every book has whoever put the books, whoever put the book, to, book together's views on things, okay? It's not necessarily the be-all, end-all. Just because it's in a book doesn't necessarily mean that it is correct or that it, it, is, it is the final word on it, okay? Um, this is just what these people did by the editors of Organic and Gardening and Farming, okay? This is what they think it should be like. Does that, that doesn't mean they're wrong. That just means they're not, maybe not, there's other ways to go with it. Hi, Jedi. Yes, you did finally catch me, Spangies. Finley. Oh, thank you, sweetie. I was just going to go over... This is what we're going to do last time is going over the book stocking up a little bit. I, I picked preserving vegetables and fruit drying uh, for the topic. But, you know, if you guys have something else you'd rather, you know, talk about, that's always, you know, this is this is an ebb and flow thing. So we can talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. Now, in here, it says that, um, and I think it's correct. That both fruits and vegetables should be perfect for drying. Blemished or bruised fruit will not keep as well and may turn the whole tray bad. Okay. Yes, you want to you want to pick your best vegetables and fruits for drying. You want, you don't want to pick the dregs. Hi, Pepper. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Hi, Cooper. DB. Good to see you, bud. No problem, Finley. I just appreciate you coming. There's a little bit of a lag, so if I don't, when you type it in, if I don't, you know, respond right then, it's because of the lag. It goes to YouTube and then back to me and then back to YouTube and then out to you. So, um, so it takes a few seconds, which is by itself a miracle if you think about it. So, you were in Florida too? Because I have a lot of people from Florida. See, there's Florida, Central Florida Prepper right there. It's been like 93 or so. I don't even know. Uh, it's been pretty hot here. I've been staying inside. So, yeah, Florida can be pretty humid, Cooper. Very, very, very humid. Very humid. 
Now, one thing in here, it says about that they all need to be blanched. Well, not necessarily. There's a lot of foods that don't need to be blanched. And in here, um, in most commercial drying operations, apricots and peaches are usually sulfured. Okay. But they also disapprove of sulfuring, and so do I. Okay. Um, because it puts, it puts a little bit of a funky taste to it and also chemicals in your system. Do you really want to eat sulfur? Um, I think a better way to preserve color would be to use vitamin C or lemon juice. Yeah, it is kind of hot out here, isn't it, hon? Uh, but with the blanching, uh, if you want to know about blanching, I'll read what it says here. A pressure cooker or a large heavy pot makes a good steamer. Place a shallow layer of vegetables not over two and one half inches deep in a wire basket or stainless steel or enamel colander. Have two or more inches of boiling water in the pot. Set the basket on the rack above the water. Cover tightly and keep the water boiling rapidly. Heat until every piece of vegetable is heated all the way through. Okay. If there's no convenient way of steaming, boiling, boiling is second best. Use a large amount of water to cover the food so that the temperature of the water will not lower appreciably when the food it, food is added. So, but, you know, blanching stuff isn't necessary on all levels. Okay. You can, you can do a lot of freezing and a lot of dehydrating without blanching. Okay. Um, depending on, there's a few things that I think need to be blanched like potatoes. Okay. Otherwise they're going to end up turning really dark brown or black on you. Uh, that actually doesn't interfere with their flavor because some look horrible. Uh, so, you know, you you definitely should learn how to blanch. So if you're going to dehydrate potatoes, you can do it. Now, the stuff that you buy in the freezer department at the store, like hash browns or diced potatoes or any of that stuff, that's already all been blanched. You don't have to do anything to it if you want to dry it in your dehydrator. Okay. So uh, those you don't have to blanch. But if you have to peel the potato and slice it or chop it or whatever you're going to do, then you probably blanch it. Okay. And, you know, every, blanching is different. Everything, everything's different. Um, let's see if it says anything about potatoes in here. Peas, peppers, peanuts, onions, pumpkin, and rhubarb. No, what, it didn't even go into potatoes? What the heck? Hmm. Okay. Uh, now, there's a lot of things you can do. Like, when I was going into the Foxfire books, these ones right here, uh, it was talking about what they called leather britches, which is basically green beans, okay? And you can actually string them on a string, like sew them onto a string. You know, they're long. Just put, poke a needle through them, piece of string, and make loops of them, and uh, just let them hang and dry that way, okay? Okay. Um, you guys are all talking about the weather. Look at you go. I hope you're not too bored. I figured there needed to be a topic for the live streams. Okay. A lot of people just get on there and just kind of wing it. I figured there needed to be a topic. So um, the topic can change at any time, depending on what you guys like. So let's see. Just got back from Florida. Hot down here. I'm Spangies. Still seeing you again. Unfortunately, I was. Glad to be home. And saying hi to I'm Spangies. And winter in the low 50s. Where are you at? Oh, that's right. New Zealand. I thought they were. Oh, that's right. They're down there. Like similar to uh, uh, Australia. They have a different season than we do. It's like backwards to us. Of course, we're backwards to you. So, um, yeah. So, if you guys want to learn a bit, a bit more about dehydrating vegetables, just let me know in the comments over there, and I'll, and I'll do it. If you want to know something else, I'll be more than glad to discuss it, because I am no dictator. Uh, now, in this book, uh, it's got things about vegetables and fruits, and, and then that is the drying, canning, underground storage, pickles and relishes. Uh, dairy products with a freezing them, making butter, cottage cheese, yogurt, cheese, uh, storing eggs. Uh, that includes the old-fashioned stuff like water glassing. Uh, meats. Um, dressing poultry, freezing it, canning it, curing it. 
nuts, seeds, and grains, nuts, sunflower seeds, grains, and breads. Okay. All that's in here. No, but I did, uh, I, what I've done, Spangies, is I've, uh, I've, uh, I've, I've, I subscribe to them, and I hit their bell icon, and I plan on checking that out as soon as I can. I've been kind of busy. My, uh, my son's window on his car, it's an electric window, rolled down and wouldn't roll up. Okay. So we ended up rolling it all the way down. Uh, so I was hoping that it would re-trip it where it would roll back up, but it, nothing happened. We checked the fuses. We checked the switch. It worked. It was with the same with both switches on either side of the car because it was the passenger side that messed up. None of the switches would make it roll up. So I'm pretty sure it's the motor. Um, <clears throat> so I, anyway, I ended up taking the door panel off last night. We were up until 9, 30, 10 o'clock doing that because it was like super hot. And so I haven't had much time to do that. We never could get it fixed, but at least I, I can get the I can get the motor out and put it back in myself without having to pay somebody to do it. All he's got to do is buy the motor. So it was a very interesting uh, YouTube channel about how to make sutures and things like that. Actually, Spangies, if you could, if you'd post the link to that YouTube in here where people could go check that out for themselves, because it might just be something they might be interested in. If you can find it again, I don't have the name off the top of my head. So, uh, yeah, if you can open up another page and grab their link. And just so everybody knows, Spangies is with me. Oh, um, since you're a mod, all you got to do is go to their page. And then at the very top where it says HTTPS, blah, 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 blah. Just click it once. It'll turn blue. Then you right click it and copy it. There we go. Mini med lessons. Let me see if I can get the link for you. Hold on to your shoes. YouTube.com. I'm pulling it up now. I'll get it. But what you do is you write copy it to paste it. I'll get you the link, guys. I thought it was pretty interesting. Here we go. Alright. There you go, guys. That's mini med lessons. Um, he's got in there how to do different types of sutures and, and, and everything. Um, I think it's real important, you know, and especially in a post SHTF situation, if you have to sew somebody up, you know, you need to at least know how to do it. Um, you know, and there's lots of things you have to learn too, but that's one of them. I have tons of people I could, I could post, but it's just really hard to get everybody on here. Um, are you guys more interested in... Uh, SHTF stuff or preserving stuff or crap. What do you, what, you know? <laughs> Cooper. <laughs> I have a couple of X's myself. I get it. Preserving. Okay. Well, we were talking about the, the, uh, the dehydrating and the Fox Fry books, of course, like I was getting into was talking about the leather britches where they used to take their, their green beans and they'd sell them into a long string and then they'd hang the strings up and let them dry. Um, of course, nowadays we have, you know, commercial dehydrators and, and home for home use dehydrators. And so it, it's a little bit better than it was. That's old timey way to do it, okay. but it still works. Uh, if you guys don't have a dehydrator and you have a little bit of skill, it doesn't take much. You can make one super easy. Um, you can take any kind of a wire shelving unit, you know, um, and just, you can even, you know, just glue or hand sew or sta even staple with, with like office staples, screen a screen cover, and then just lay pieces of screen down on the shelves and put your fruit and stuff on that, put it out in the daytime, bring it in at night. 
and you can dry it that way. Oh, thank you, Finley. I find Finley, I find I'm not finding I have a hard top, time getting into your live streams because it's so late because you're out doing, you know, coon hunting and stuff that there's no way I could even stay for that. And so it's hard for me to be able to 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 stay for very long. I usually try to pop in and at least hit the thumbs up. Um, oh, in case everybody didn't notice, my son and I are probably going to be moving to Oklahoma within the next few months. And uh, excuse me, I drank some soda. Um, and uh, we're gonna he's going to use his VA loan to get a homestead out there. And I'll be putting a lot of this stuff. Yes, we are. Um, I'm going to be putting a lot of this stuff to practical application. And y'all are going to get tons of videos over that. Uh, I know I haven't been doing many videos the last few days. To be, but to be quite honest with you, I don't have a car. Okay, so I can't go anywhere and do a lot of stuff. Uh, and I'm kind of running out of things to do around here to show you. Um, oh, I love Texas. Uh, I'm not really fond of West Texas, but Texas is very beautiful. I went to actually went to school uh, southeast of uh, Austin in high school to a little place called Smithville. And uh, anyway, to get back to the homestead thing, uh, we're also gonna we're gonna have livestock and uh, a big huge garden. And if he gets a big, he, he's wanting to get this place that's 50 acres. If he gets a 50 acre place, we're actually going to be putting in uh, a bamboo forest, basically, uh, for commercial sale. So it takes a while to get it grown. Yeah, I'm going to do more camping, Vinzy, and I promise I'm going to do more of those. But he is leaving tomorrow. He's going to be gone for two weeks and I won't have a vehicle. So, you know, I can't go do anything um, unless I want to hike there. And I can't really do that. Uh, not in the desert in the middle of summer <laughs> with no vehicle. And, of course, I have my son's cats here to take care of. I can always take my dog with me. But Well, they say everything's bigger in Texas, and that includes a bigger temperature, right? <laughs> uh, hi, Rebel Jack. How are you? Okay, well, back to this preserving thing. Since somebody's shown some interest in that. Um, on the uh, asparagus, it says use only the top three inches of the spear. Blanch until tender and firm about 10 minutes. Now... If you blanch it and then you can it, that's 90 minutes worth of canning because it takes about 90 minutes to can something that's not super sweet with a lot of sugar or very acidic like tomatoes. Um, up to 90 minutes pretty handy and meats and things like that. That's why asparagus is so bushy in the can because they have to can it for such a long time. Yes, it can. Very much. Very much. Um... You know, if, if you have, if, if the S hasn't hit the fan yet, <laughs> then uh, you can always run a, uh, an electric fan to blow over it. You can dry them inside and just lay them out on trays with a fan blowing over it. Um, but they'll dry a little bit quicker in the sun. Uh, but like you said, humidity does, does play a part. So if you're down in Florida and it's 85%, 90% humidity, it's going to take longer. Oh, jam is super easy. Basically, you just take the fruit and, 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 and you kind of cook it down. You add a shitload of sugar and some pectin. And you put it in the jars, wipe the rims really good, and then you water bath can it for a specified amount of time. Doing jams and jellies is super easy. Uh, just make sure you start with really good fruit. Okay. Um, if you're going to do jelly, you're going to have to strain the stuff off the, the juice off of the fruit. So you're going to need something to do that with, whether that be uh, like cheesecloth, a couple layers of cheesecloth, um, something in order to strain the fruit. <laughs> Strawberries are awesome. Yes. H-E-B. We don't have one around me. 
I used to shop exclusively there when we lived in Texas, or when we lived in Aust uh, Southeast Austin. We always shopped at ATV. So, and this is a discussion. So if you have any tips on dehydrating, pipe up, tell everybody. Absolutely. Now on beans, lima beans, and soybeans, it says to shell and blanch them for 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. Um, I'm not so sure that would be the best because beans can be dried as is. Okay. You can blanch them, but uh, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to blanch them and then dry them, it's just going to make the drying process that much longer because you're soaking them in hot water first. So, <laughs> well, I'm in El Paso, remember? But yeah, you can take the fruit and after you, you can cut it up, you know, and then mash it with a potato masher if you want it a little bit more or less chunky. Okay. Um, on beans and on snap beans, it says cut or slice into small pieces, blanch for about 20 minutes and place on trays about a half inch deep. Uh, no, I haven't tried strawberries yet. Uh, I haven't been doing much any, anything with that. <laughs> Since we're going to move. If I were to start running this dehydrator, and it's it's just right up there, right up there on top of that thing, you just have to move it, okay? Uh, and you know we're gonna have to move everything, so I think I'll wait to do the may the, the bulk of the dehydrating. I plan on doing. I'm gonna wait till I get to Oklahoma. That's why I kind of put that up. Uh, I had started getting into it, and I took a lot of that stuff with me camping, but. Uh, the, th the fact of the matter is, is if I don't, if I, if I get all this stuff dehydrated, where am I going to put it? I just have to pack it and move it. So the frozen ones would be awesome. Um, you're going to want to get some fruit fresh or some lemon juice and uh, let them, let them thaw out and then put them down in there before you do anything else with them and let them soak for a minute and then pull them out and do what you got to do. Okay. That does give a little bit of tartness to it. The only thing that would happen if you don't is the strawberries might turn a little darker colored. But it's not going to affect them really, except for the, 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 the appearances mostly. Uh, that's what you're really trying to do is, is preserve the appearance, the bright red strawberry color. But yeah, lemon juice or fruit fresh. Personally, I like the fruit fresh, but um, I'm not sure. I didn't put them in. Now, I did. I take that back. I did do some bananas and I dipped them into straight lemon juice. Uh, they still turned a little dark. I don't know if they would. I don't know if anything could, you know, bananas are the way they are. Um, I don't know that anything could have kept them from turning dark, but I do have some fruit fresh and I plan on using that next time. I don't know about the apple juice. Uh, or uh, lemon juice are mixed with water. Yeah. And what you did for the apples, I looked at that wrong when I read it. What you do for the apples should work for the other fruit. Okay. Yes. Because apples are notorious for turning dark. Now, when you do beets, you remove the tops and roots, tops and roots, and blanch for about 45 minutes until cooked through. Okay, they're saying you want they want you to dehydrate cooked beets. Um, I think we would need to actually look that up. I don't think you have to dehydrate beets that are cooked. I think you can dehydrate them raw, but you may or may not want to stick them in there for just a minute. I don't know. I would. You know, I'm not agreeing with a lot of what this book says, even though it's supposed to be a really good one. Uh, I think a lot of it is unnecessary. So anything that you don't know or you question, start looking it up. Most definitely. Giraffes. <laughs> What's the deal with giraffes, Calvin? Now it says on broccolis, trim and slice into small one-half inch strips 
and blanch for 10 minutes, which means cook them through because 10 minutes to cook a small piece of broccoli. Um, in an SHTF situation, you might not be able to cook all this stuff before you dehydrate it or blanch it, as they say. Uh, some things blanch, some things probably could use to be blanched, um, like uh, I don't know. I don't know. Peas and mushrooms and onions don't need to be blanched at all to dehydrate. Um, potatoes do. They really do require it if you want them to look at all good. Pumpkin and squash and rhubarb. Now, I dehydrated. When I did my celery, it said that I just took it, I washed it off, and I drained it a little bit, and then I chopped it up and put it in my dehydrator. I did nothing else to it. It dehydrated just fine. Didn't turn color. Didn't get nasty. It was perfect. And then I took and powdered it and made celery powder out of it because the pieces were minuscule. I should have left them in a little bit larger chunk. Um, now, I think what the blanching does is it makes it more tender when you rehydrate it more than anything. Uh, sometimes things like mushrooms, you know, they get a little chewy when you rehydrate them. But they still taste good and they still taste like mushrooms. Uh, as a matter of fact, the dehydrated mushrooms that I had, I've been using those in my gravies. Because <laughs> I like brown mushroom gravy. And so what I've been doing is just buying the, the cheap on sale packages of the instant instant gravy mix. And then I just put mushrooms in there with it. I take and I just take a handful of them, crush them up in there. And it's fine. Cooper, I'm going to smack you. <laughs> uh, that's just wrong. <laughs> oh, you're gonna go do tanks? I plan on doing that here in a little bit. I'll be doing a uh, so for the other people that don't know, I play a game called World of Tanks, and Ian is 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 one of my online game friends there, and we play sometimes together. And, but yeah, I'm doing an advance tonight, Jedi. So. Oh, I don't mind being stuck with you, Cooper. You know, he might not even stay gone long term. He may come back. You never know. Never say never, right? Hi, Doug. South Florida Peppers here as well. I'm going to miss JJ, though. If you guys don't know who we're talking about, it's JJ Johnson with Reality, Reality Surviving and Prepping. Um, he has a YouTube channel, and I've watched him a lot. He's real smart. Uh, he's not a crackpot by any stretch. But I guess YouTube was giving him a hard time or something, so he decided he was going to take his little toys and go to somebody else's sandbox to play, which is fine. Um, if YouTube ever gives me a really hard time, I'm liable to follow him. So, you hear that, YouTube? Need to quit messing with your people, man, or you'll end up with no videos. Or not as many. Oh, uh, well, he, he may just have gotten frustrated. Okay, I think we need to just cut him a little slack on that. Let him go through his little deal. And it wouldn't hurt him to have a second platform to be on anyway. Uh, I've got all my videos, except for the exception of the live streams, I've got all my videos saved on my hard drive on my desktop. Uh, so I can always take my little toys and go to somebody else's sandbox as well. So Now on zucchini and tomatoes and summer squash, it says do not peel, slice into thin strips and blanch for about seven minutes. Uh, wash, quarter and blanch for five minutes. Run through a food mill to remove any skins and seeds. Strain out the juice or jelly bag. Uh, I don't know why you'd want to. Oh, oh he's talking about the tomatoes on that one. Uh, so you can make tomato powder. So, yeah, tomato powder would be awesome. I'm just drying. If I'm going to dry any tomatoes, I'm just going to dry, dry them in slices. 
uh, I can always do something with them after I rehydrate them. I do believe it's considered a fruit. Yeah, I don't have beer because I don't drink beer. I do, however, drink some soda and coffee. Lots of coffee. Hi, Susan. Oh, happy Friday to you too, hon. Uh, we've only been on for about a half hour. I, I don't never, I'm not going to go over an hour with this live stream. Because I'm not going to be, you know, doing like, you know, two and three hour live streams. That's not going to happen. Because first of all, who's got that kind of time to spend watching me yak about vegetables, right? Where's my dinner, Spangies? Jeez, Louise. No, actually, I'm making uh, sausage, gravy, and biscuits tonight for dinner. Yes, I know we're having breakfast for dinner, but we do that anyway. That's the only time we ever get it because he's gone so early in the morning. He, he doesn't get breakfast here. No, 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 no. I was, I was telling everybody that I wasn't going to be on forever on the live stream, Spangies. I'm only going to go on for another 20 or 30 minutes. Um, I'm not really too much into the dehydrated fruit. Uh I would personally rather just rehydrate it and have it as regular fruit, as, as close to fruit as you can after dehydrating it. It never goes back to original. But. So, okay. Preparing the fruit for drying. Apples and apricots. Pear, core. And cut into thin slices or rings. Cut in half to remove the pit. Leave in the halves. Or cut into slices or pieces. Now, you guys probably know that's a, that, that little potato. Uh, potato. Apple peeler core slicer. Okay. And it, it does everything all at once. You just crank the handle and it, and it takes it through its little paces. And then when you pull it off, it's like it's like a slinky, right? And you, if you cut down one side, you end up with a bunch of, bunch of uh, apple rings. And those are awesome. You can throw them directly in your your um, bowl of of uh, fruit pre preservation, fruit color preservation, whether you use fruit fresh or uh, lemon juice or whatever you happen to be using. You can just, as you're peeling and coursing and slicing them, you can just throw them directly into that bowl. And then when you've got enough done, you just drain them and then put them on your drying trays. Ah, I'll talk to you later, Susan. Thank you for coming, sweetie. Yeah, I thought it was a fruit. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it seems more of a vegetable to me because it's not fruit. I, I, I think fruit should be sweeter. Of course, you know, I guess I'm not a geneticist or anything, so I don't know anything about that. So, On berries, you have the strawberries and leave other smaller berries whole. Okay. Now, if it's a great big strawberry, because some of them strawberries are monster, you might want to cut it into slices rather than just have it because some of those halves might be huge depending on the on the strawberry um the uh riper it is the sweeter it's going to be of course uh i would not you're going to want to pick the best fruit and vegetables for your drying that you can possibly pick and, you know if it's subpar it's not going to end up being better once it's rehydrated um uh, and those of you that have gardens, you can take any fruit or uh, vegetable leftovers like the peels or the, or the ends or the roots or anything that's left over. And you put that in your compost bin along with all your coffee grounds and all that kind of stuff. And you can put things in there like your coffee filters. And, and you know, if you happen to have your little compost bin can in your, inside your home, you can, you can line that with newspapers. So it makes it easier to get out to throw onto your compost bin. You can leave the newspaper in there. Uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of the uh, of all the ink on it, but it will disintegrate and it will incorporate and it will make compost. So, so that takes care of that part. Cherries. Pit and remove the stems. Let drain onto until no juice flows from them. Well, you know, that depends on what you want. If you're just wanting to dry them, you know, it might be a little less messy in your dehydrator to do that. Uh I would think, though, if I was going to have the cherries, I'd want to just turn them up so all the juice stays in the little skins. And uh, that's 
part of the goodness of the cherries. So it would take longer to dry them, yes. But, you know, instead of laying them face down, lay them face up after you've cut them in half so that the juice stays in the cherries so that when you dehydrate it, you got all of it. See, that's what I was talking about. These th this thing doesn't have every way there is to do it. Uh, grapes, same thing. Uh, peaches, cut in halves and remove pits, skin and slice if desired. Okay. I don't know that half, it would take forever to draw a half of a peach, depending on the size of the peach. I'm pretty sure you're probably going to want to uh, slice it or dice it. Uh, and, you know, the skins are going to get really tough if they're dried. So, you know, be prepared for that. Hey, Beastly, how are you? Pears and plums. Skin and remove the core. Cut into slices or rings. Maybe pitted or left whole. Uh, blanch about two minutes to crack the skin and make the fruit dry quicker. Now, <coughs> speaking of cracking skins, like blueberries, if you go to dry them whole, it takes forever. But the frozen berry, blueberries, they dry a whole lot faster. I miss you too, Beastly. The frozen blueberries dry a lot faster because the freezing cracked the skin. Uh, you do the same thing with tomatoes too if you want to skin them before you dry them is you dip them, dip them in hot water and skin craps and then it, you can just pull it right off so I, you do the same thing with peaches as well I do believe uh, prunes may be pitted or left whole like plums they may be blanched two minutes to make the drying easier and rose hips you cut off the blossom ends and stems so but the drying trays, now we can get into the drying trays now. If you have like a, a, a store-bought dehydrator, then they have what they call clean screens. Hey, Monica. And the clean screens uh, will keep the stuff, because when it dries, it shrinks tremendously. Uh, and, you know, like you could take a slice of, uh, of okay, like the, the celery I did. I took a slice about that thick and then the, however wide the celery was and it shrank down to the point where it was like less than the size of a garden pea and it wants to fall through the trays on the dehydrator. You better quit scratching my couch. Yeah, that. Sorry, the cat was being unacceptable. Hey, Rod. Uh, so they have what they call clean screens. Okay. And what they are is they're just they just lay into the tray and they got a lot smaller holes so you can put things on there and they won't fall through to the tray but tray but down below or all the way to the bottom and those things are handy as a shirt pocket so if you get a dehydrator and you get uh, buy extra clean screens you know you're going to want at least one clean screen for for each tray and then you're going to also want to get some um if you want to do fruit roll-ups it only usually comes with like one fruit roll-up tray so you might want to order some additional fruit roll-up trays I had a problem with my particular dehydrator. Uh, it didn't have replacement parts for it available anywhere. I looked all over and I couldn't buy clean screens for it. I couldn't buy fruit roll-up trays for it. And this was after I had gotten it. So I ended up buying the, the other ones that were there. And I ended up having to take scissors and cut them down because they were too big. So, but you can do that. You know, you can, you can, you can arrange that. Now, uh, Excalibur is the name of the brand of the of the most uh how do you put it the one everybody thinks is the cat's meow right it's supposed to be the best dehydrator on the market i don't know for a fact that that's true but the excalibur is supposed to be the cat's meow hi pennsylvania prepper glad to see you um the sun and the air do most of the work, okay? Uh, you need to protect from insects and damp weather if you're going to do it uh, outside and, and on drying trays, okay? Um, you know, if you have big trays you want to set up, that's fine. But you're going to need to put something over them to keep the bugs off of it. Because, you know, bugs like, to, you know, especially and bees and things like that, they smell all that fruit. They're going to come, you know, check it out. So... Oh, talk to you later, DB. I'm almost done anyway. Thank you for coming, sweetie. I appreciate it so much. So much. So you can buy the screen at any home, like Home Depot or Lowe's or any home improvement store. Uh, and you can either use it, you know, especially with the with the uh, 
nylon type screen it's not metal you can actually sew it with a sewing machine so if you have a sewing machine and you want to make tray covers or make a big cover for a shelf unit like one of those metal rack shelves and then you can put your trays on that you can just make a cover for the whole thing and you can even if you do it right you can even make make it to where you can have a velcro closure for it just make sure that it's 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 good and bug proof and ants don't forget about ants okay uh, one way to eliminate ants is to have the legs on your shelving unit of course you can't do this with wooden ones of course but with like the metal ones you can actually stick them in a tray of water so so basically they'd have to swim to get to it so that's one way to keep that uh, you don't want the trays too close together okay you're going to want at least this much apart so that there's plenty of airflow now with the wire racks you know those those things are quite far apart and if you make it to where there's lots of trays just make sure that you can stack them up to where they have plenty of airflow because airflow is key to dehydrating foods airflow is a must so uh, but you can even make wooden frames if you want uh, you can make it you can make the bottom frame be a screen a two by four or two by two or one by one whatever kind of a, a frame and then you can make screens you know on all on like two by twos all the way up stack them and then just have the top wouldn't be a screen as well okay and unless they warp you know the wood's going to create the barrier but at that point it's also going to restrict airflow so you're going to have to make sure that there's some breeze going on in between those trays uh so you'll either have to uh, like run a fan or if it's a windy day it probably wouldn't be a problem okay hi samanda um you can use your oven to dehydrate uh i personally have a hard time with that because ovens normally don't go down low enough most everything needs to be dehydrated from between like 105 to 160 degrees most ovens don't go down lower than like 200 a lot of them uh so now if you have an oven that's gas and it has a pilot light down there the heat from the pilot light should make it warm enough in there to dehydrate but you just, still you're going to have to check it and there's not a lot of room inside of an oven yeah and that's too that actually cooks the food spangies um it's not the ideal way to dehydrate food okay and you can dry it indoors now if you're inside and you know you have an air conditioner you got central air it's pulling moisture out of the air so the inside air is drier than the outside air so if you're in a super humid environment like what he mentioned um plastic canvas sheets yeah uh, i wouldn't i would be careful with the plastic canvas sheets spankies because some of them may or may not be food grade okay um you just have to make sure it's 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 a it's a quality of of uh plastic that won't leach a bunch of really nasty stuff into your food other than that i think you're fine that because that's almost exactly what clean screens are okay <clears throat> well hot peppers you know if you're drying them completely like that it might be okay but there's a lot of things that's too hot for uh pennsylvania prepper like fruits um okay where were we uh, drying is finished when the fruit feels dry and leathery to the outside but slightly moist inside now that may or may not be the way you want to do it when i dried my bananas i dried them crisp because i wanted as much moisture out of them as i could get out of them and so they had to stay in there an extra like seven or eight hours all right uh depending on on the uh the dryer and what you want to do with it uh i decide like i said i'm going to rehydrate this stuff i'm not going to leave it and just eat it dehydrated uh when i get ready to use it i'll throw it in a bowl of water and, and rehydrate it as you know for 5 10 15 minutes however long it takes um your food shrinks tremendously when you dehydrate it 
Okay, it it, it shrinks uh, down to about a third, maybe, and then it rehydrates at almost at approximately. This is not a hard and set rule. Approximately 50-50 ratio. So if you dehydrate your if you if you pull out your dehydrated peas and you've got a half a cup of them. When you put it into the water, when you're done, you'll have approximately one cup of peas. Okay, so when you're rehydrating it, they never they, ne they never go quite back as big as they were when you originally dehydrated them, or when you originally put them on the trays for the dehydrator. So you can, you can figure they're going to lose probably two thirds of their volume when you dry them, approximately. Uh, that's been my experience on what I've dehydrated. Uh, but when you rehydrate them back, you're only going to get about a 50-50 ratio. So just keep that in mind. Uh, that doesn't mean that it, there's less, you need to dehydrate more because the same amount of nutrients and things in there are, are even if they're not quite as big as when they first started, they're, they're still in there. The same amount of nutrients. So <coughs> speaking of nutrients, dehydrating preserves most of your nutrients. Okay, I'm sure there's a few lost, but not like there is with canning or anything of that nature. Your dehydrating is going to save a lot of your nutrients. Um, you know, and that's going to be important, especially in an SHTS situation. You're going to need those vitamins and minerals and nutrients in that food. And you have to have, you know, of course, a way to preserve it. And dehydrating is an ideal way to do that if there's no power. Because you can make one yourself. You can even cook it in a sun oven. Okay, you don't even need electricity to bake something. You can get one of them sun ovens, and some of them are really good. And if you live anywhere where there's a lot of sun, you can you can bake in that like a roast all day long. Or you can bake bread, you can put biscuits, there's all kinds of things you can do in a sun oven. So and none of that takes power. All it takes is the sun. And it's the cheapest, most efficient way to save money. Okay. Because uh, you can go down to the farmer's market and you can buy things in bulk. You can buy a flat of strawberries or a, a bushel basket of green beans. Um, or, you know, there's all five, you know, and then take it home and start drying it. Now, with one of these little home, home machines, you really can't dry that much at one time. And so, therefore, you can't, you don't want to buy too much at one time. But if you had several of them, it would be all right. But then you have the electric bill, which is why a homemade dehydrator works so well. Because you can make it very large to where it'll hold a lot of stuff. And everything dries at different rates. Okay. So make sure that, that if you're putting stuff on there, put, put the same size fruit on one tray. Okay. You don't want to put big chunks of fruit with little chunks of fruit. Okay. You want to put all big trunks on one tray, all little chunks on another tray, because that little tray is going to dry faster. So, and that you don't want to have to pick out of it, pick it out, because uh, you want to be able to clear that screen and put another screen in, so that you can dehydrate more efficiently. So, peas are so easy to dehydrate. So are blueberries. And they rehydrate really well. You can even make your own blueberry muffin mixes and all kinds of stuff. And you can add the dehydrated blueberries right into it. Mix it all up like I did with the uh, video I made on um, on pancake mix. I can make, I could throw blueberries in that and then have blueberry pancake mix. So, anyway, guys, uh, let's see. Any other questions? An outdoor kitchen. Nice. Yeah, exactly, Samanda. And it was outside. You just have to make sure it doesn't get rained on. Okay. And you have to make sure that, especially if you're in an area where there's dew, you need to pull it in at night because that dew will rehydrate it. And if it gets rehydrated and redried and hydrated, you know, it takes so long and it'll re actually ruin the flavor of your food. It might even mold it or, or make it rot. So at night, you need to pull it in or cover it up, preferably pull it in. And it also keeps wild animals off of it at nighttime, too, because you don't want the local squirrel population or, or possums or raccoons, you know, getting into your dehydrator and eating all your hard work. That could suck. So, But, yeah, you'll, you, if, you, if you make one of those big dehydrators, put it on wheels. You know, put casters on the bottom so you can roll it in and roll it out. Make it easy on yourself. So, 
Let's see what you guys say. If I if I get to looking down here, it's because I'm reading the chat because I want to see what you guys are talking about. You probably could, Pennsylvania Prepper. Um, you know, you still have to worry about airflow and you have to worry about the heat inside the car because if it's summertime, it gets very hot in there. Uh, and yeah, it'd probably dry it out, but it might cook it at the same time. Of course, you know, I grew up a lot in the Southwest, especially like Arizona. You could actually fry an egg on somebody's hood on their car. And the inside was... It's a death trap to anybody caught in there. And just imagine what that would do to your food. Okay. Because it's so hot inside. Yeah. Meals on wheels. There you go. Freaky. Hi. Glad you're here. We were just fixing to wind it up. But yeah, you could put it. You could put the baking sheets on the windshield. In the windshield of your car up on your dash. Um, I would just leave the windows down. But then you still have to worry about bugs at that point. So uh, it's, it's better to go ahead and probably make your own a hydrator using window screens and stuff you know you guys can google it there's there's all kinds of places you can find plans on how to do it you can just make it whatever size you want okay you don't have to follow plans necessarily you just need a good staple gun and you need maybe uh, you know a drill and and some screws and a screw gun uh, to be able to screw the frame together and screen it's so easy to make super simple so, there you go, freaking. <laughs> there we go, Spangies. Cook the cookies in your car. I'm afraid I'd forget about them. I'd come back and they'd be little hard rocks. <laughs> but yeah, you can cook all kinds of things in a sun oven, too. So, you know, if you guys don't have a sun oven, it would be a good idea to have that in your preps. Okay. Uh, they have some good ones. Uh, they have ones that actually fold up flat. They've got bigger ones. You know, if you're in a homestead situation uh, where you have room to store something like that, then, yeah, the, one of the bigger, nice sun ovens, yeah, those are awesome. If you are, like, say, if you're a van dweller, okay, uh, or an RV drill, if you live in an RV, then you probably want one of the ones that fold up and can slide into a, a little narrow slot somewhere so that you can, so that you can uh, uh, store it out of the way where it doesn't take up much room. They've got a lot of different flavors on those. <laughs> Freaky, you're nuts. <laughs> so, okay, guys. Well, it's been, let's see, 52 minutes. Okay. Does anybody have any last questions? If you do, please type them up and we'll get to it. And if you guys would hit the thumbs up for me, I'd appreciate it. I got eight people in here. I'm rocking and rolling. Oh, uh, you can always rewatch it. It'll be on my channel because it shows up later. Like, I guess they have to look at it over and make sure I didn't do anything bad before they allow it to publish. But, um, what? What's Amanda? This is where the uh, the lag really starts showing up. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Okay, guys. Well, I appreciate you guys. If you did the thumbs up, share with your friends, you know, uh, anything like that, I'd appreciate it. And you guys have a great day today and even greater day tomorrow. And y'all come back and see me. Okay. I'm going to get out of here for now. I'll let you guys go. Thank you so much for coming.